Our college football global imperialism conquest continues today in North America. More than likely right in your backyard. It's a party in the USA. College football is a tradition, a way of living, and all about getting the NIL bag nowadays. The NIL rule. The highest overall in global imperialism is opting out of the fun so they will be benched throughout this entire tournament. The underdog rule, who doesn't love a Cinderella story? If you get up by two possessions, you have to sub in your second string defense. And we will be playing on normal fields. Remember the team that wins North America gets to steal one player for every game they win. And as commonplace in Imperialism so far, we get to bring in one offense, one defensive hero to join the victor of North America in the World War. Here is a look at North America and where the teams in the Sun Belt were randomly assigned. From Mexico down south to way up north in Canada, it all begins with Coastal Carolina. And the Coastal Chanticleers with the Teal Field headed to the right. Therefore, Coastal's actually trying to head home and they have a matchup against Georgia Southern. Breaking news per NIL rule here in North American imperialism, Grayson McCall is opting out, meaning Jarrett Guest is our guest in this matchup. For Georgia Southern, Caleb Hood's opting out. And holy moly, Coastal Carolina has been putting in the work, 42 points today. And yes, as you'll see through the matchups to come, second team defense will be in. If Georgia Southern can bring it within two possessions, that will no longer be the case. Will the Eagles get themselves back into this ball game? There's four minutes to go and they're gonna need some quick drive. Davis Brin behind the helm here without Caleb Hood and it's hurting them. I'm telling you though, they're not missing Grayson McCall over on Coastal Carolina side. Second in goal, handoff up the middle, touchdown. 22 323 passing yards four touchdowns guests did quite enough today and that is the ball game opening blood coastal chanticleers man they get it done and we have action on the board it's a sad day but someone has to fall first it's just how imperialism goes arkansas state red wolves up next let's check out where these guys are headed next so far a lot of action across usa early now we're going up against old dominion Check it in on opt-outs. Dominic Zavada, the Arkansas State kicker, is their best player on the roster. Old Dominion, on the other hand, has been without Jason Henderson. A team full of 70s, it hurts to lose a 95 overall. If I'm going to envy anyone's situation here dealing with NIL opt-outs, I got to envy Arkansas State. They're only losing a kicker as Old Dominion is losing a star-studded middle linebacker. So... Um, gosh, that's been difficult and probably part of the reason why they're losing. And oh no, that's another reason. Throwing a big pick here. After that big interception, Arkansas State just looking to ice this one and they're just about to do it. With third and inches to go, it's a handoff and he's got it and some. So that's going to do it. Arkansas State holds on. Congrats to the Red Wolves. Only had to lose their kicker in this one and they hold on 13 to 10. Jalen Raynor is player of the game. And just like that, we're now square across the United States. Slapping that wheel around Sunbelt teams that remain Coastal Carolina once again on the clock. And hold up now, that's supposed to be Georgia State, not Georgia Southern left on the list. Regardless, doesn't change a thing, and Coastal is headed to the right. In the team that borders most directly to the right is that Cuba, Ecuador type area, so it's going to be Southern Mississippi. Southern Miss going to lose a big one here in Frank Gore Jr. And you already know from the first game that McCall is opting out. So far, so good. Guest doing a good job leading his team forward. But Southern Miss doesn't want to go down without a fight. It's a handoff to number four. That's not Frank Gore Jr., but he did his best impression. Now third and goal to handoff to the other running back, number two, who fumbles it, and that is a Coastal Carolina turnover they get the ball back only costed them a couple minutes now they're back in pretty much the same spot big defensive effort the last time will it be another defensive stand and that's a touchdown southern miss still down by nine so that's a two possession game and these plays here into the red zone are proving to be too much just the finishing touches guest is going to be two and O oh in the young global campaign for north america so congratulations to these guys they are early battle tested and guest does it again well, all right, it was short-lived for Southern Miss, and now Coastal has all of the southern part of North America. Teams from the Sun Belt starting to drop off, and we're going to continue the journey to South Alabama. Let's figure out where these guys got to go. And South Alabama up in Canada, heading across the frozen tundra to play the Warhawks. Warhawks, Jaguars, they got a first down on this play and a big chunk into the red zone. Warhawks are down without their top receiver because of an opt-out. Or shoot, I was confused the last two plays. Hold on now, this is South Alabama. How can I mess that up? I swear, it's the Warhawk red down in the bottom left, confusing me with the red jerseys of the Jaguars. 
What I said is still true, though. They are down an 84 overall receiver, but it didn't matter on this drive. On the other hand, South Alabama is without a 90 overall safety. This is the final chance for the Warhawks, and they are literally on the millimeter line here. It is so, so close. Look at that ball placement. A literal, a literal millimeter from the end zone here and anything could go wrong and on fourth down they just don't convert so uh, easy position south alabama not gonna rub it in though takes a knee and that's a dub they get the win here in a close one and the jaguars are moving on and this train just keeps on rolling so the warhawks are a one and done jaguars are now one win under their belt let me crank that wheel a good bit here and marshall thundering herd out of alaska on the clock there's really only one way they can go and that's against south alabama again south alabama once again dealing with banks opt out marshall on the other hand lost owen porter to me it doesn't feel like their absence really made a difference because as you can see the score is 31 to 14. the herd trying to thunder their way back to the line and get some plays off here and the herd marched on all the way down to the goal line and cash in was it all in vain? Now a 10-point game. The running back for South Alabama, Webb, plunges forward. Forget chewing clock. They're going for extra points here, and they get it done. Impressive surgence here at the end of the fourth quarter for the herd, but it's all too late. Lefty Cam Fancher trying to make some magic happen, and he's dumped. In 57 seconds, they need a touchdown, an onside kick, a touchdown, and an onside kick. Can they do it? Well, it starts right here with this fourth and goal, and he's going to sling it to number five. He's just short, man. No good. So that caps off another Jaguar victory, and these guys are starting to move 2-0 in the Young Campaign. South Alabama first expanded to the right. Now they're going to backtrack a little bit and take down the herd in their Alaska territory. Marshall one and done. They would have been a lot of fun with guys like Randy Moss on the team. Texas State is up next, sending the Bobcats to the south. And yep, you see that right. The border on the south is Arkansas State. Texas State is down 7-0 right now, and the Bobcats sure could have used their 92 overall sophomore. That's right. The Bobcats had this hidden gem of a running back, 92 overall Mindy, a sophomore RB. Instead, it's Calvin Hill toting the rock, and here's TJ Finley driving down the field. I remember Texas State in their bowl game. It was actually quite entertaining. It was in the early slate, and it was their first ever in school history. Now can the Bobcats go from first ever school bowl game victory to global champs, North American champs? It all starts right here, one game at a time, and they're going to get another first down and get right into the red zone. Remember, the only opt-out that Arkansas State is facing is their 90 overall kicker, and that's a beautiful touchdown to Bo. What a stud muffin on that last play. Finley and Texas State were down 7-0. Now it's 7-7 with a minute 40 left in this one, and he got that one out just in the nick of time. And you gotta love special teams, special plays, special players there. That special teams touchdown gave them the lead. So here we go. It's now all on the line for Arkansas State. JT Shrout here, only eight for 27. He is past midfield, but will he complete the job? He's going for a big one, and it's contested, and that looked almost intercepted. Fourth and five, 20 seconds remaining here. This is a monster play, and good catch, but hey, you're short, buddy, and that's a turnover. But yeah. Texas State completes the comeback 13-7, first touchdown pass tied it up, and then a special play from a special player to get the lead. Red Wolves had their time to shine. Texas State is now moving in. Let's go ahead and run it back and see where the wheel takes us. It's Troy. Troy up in the northern wastelands to the right. Therefore, Troy has to face James Madison. Huge losses across the board here. Jalen Green for JMU. And then Reddy Stewart at 84 overall DB for Troy is out. With two minutes left in this one, Troy is dwindling it down, and oh man, the quarterback just grabbed that pigskin and ran. JMU had a fun little run last year, but it looks like their run isn't going anywhere. They quickly met a buzzsaw in the Troy Trojans touchdown. Duke's kicking in this one in turbo, but it looks a bit late, even though that was a great connection. Although the Dukes are at the end of their road in this one, do I have anyone in the comment section wanting to rebuild these guys? They were one of my first rebuilds on this channel, and we did them a lot better than a first round exit here, and the running back just tried to stay up, couldn't do it. Fourth and goal, why the heck not? All for pride here. It's no good. All right, Troy, you're moving on, and James Madison, I'm sorry. Gunnar Watson did the thing today, 134 yards on the ground. Troy no longer confined up north. They can actually expand into the Greenland territory. Half of the Sun Belt has vanished into thin air, and it's time for Coastal Carolina to get their third test. They have been the attacker in three straight. Now looking for full control of the United States. 
I really have been impressed with Coastal Carolina's resilience without their quarterback McCall, and they have the lead in this one, but hey, not for long. Finley, the six foot seven quarterback, took it in himself on the option play in the last one there. And Coastal, what a connection down the sideline. Massive touchdown. Guest to Bikini, what a connection. And that's what I'm saying, man. Guest with his fourth touchdown pass of the day. Finley showing, though, he has some resolve and he's ready to duel. And he's got them down into the 11, 12 yards to go. So it's a little bit of late night fireworks here on the teal field. We take that. Just a few minutes left in this one. Finley looking to do it himself, but to be denied. So Finley spreads out the offense here and just looking for anyone to get open. Held short. Good stop on defense. Texas State says they're not messing around with no little three-pointer. They're going for it all right now. The whole enchilada. And it is no bueno. After some back and forth here, Texas State had the one play miracle touchdown. That's literally twice now that I've watched Texas State that they have this one play miracle that just ties things up. This time Coastal gets the stop and they are down by three, so it's time to work. All right, guest, be our guest and take it away here. Third down, it's a draw play and actually it worked out. A little surprised to see that, not gonna lie. So uh, 45 seconds to go here and wow, that was dangerous. Got to move with a little bit of urgency here. 30 seconds remaining and he dials up a good one there that's in and out the hands. This is it for Coastal. They've been working with something here in Imperialism, and their journey continues. 13 seconds left. They have to snap this one off. Here we go. It's T minus 10 seconds across the middle. Good connection there. This should be field goal range. Hurrying it up here. I thought they would spike it, but it looks like they're actually going to run a play. So this is a bit odd to me. Three, two. I don't even think they're going to have time for a field goal anymore. Oh my gosh, they're lucky. Very questionable call there with the time management, but they nailed the field goal, and we're going OT. Anything goes in overtime. Will Guest continue to shine here? He's going for a big play. Touchdown, Chanticleers. Jeez Louise, if they win this game, it might be time to start building the statue. Finley and the Bobcats here might have other ideas, so let's see if they can capitalize on the opportunity. Second and goal, handoff. He's going to go out to nowhere land. Third and goal. He's going for it, and just short. So fourth down, big play here coming. Fourth and goal, it's all on the line here. All of a sudden, Bobcats need this, and they got it. First and goal, handoff. No, it's a read option. He fooled me. Touchdown again. Bobcats score twice. Second and 15, it's a slip screen, and that's going to go just for a couple. Third and 13, do they have what it takes? And wow, fourth and about inches, hey? Texas State was celebrating like they just won the dang thing, but fourth and inches is very manageable. So with the receiver in motion, let's see if they dial up a little bit of trickery. Nope, just a straight up pass here, looking for anything. And okay, now they can celebrate. Congratulations to the Bobcats, man. Even though you guys kind of stole my Wildcat saying, eat them up, I guess in this case, go ahead and eat them up. I know you guys say it too. I'm telling y'all, something must be in the water because Texas State with the late game heroics again. Let's keep this thing moving and Texas State, you're going to have to prove it again. Let's figure out where they need to go next. Practically straight up here and from most angles across the border here, I think it's going to be App State. Wow, so far to me, it seems like Texas State is showing that they belong. I don't see a lot of promise here from anyone on App State side and now facing second string Texas State defense. Hurrying back up to the line, the Mountaineers are going to get dropped, sacked, fumble, stripped, every single word under the sun there, touchdown, 55. They just keep eating them up, I guess, and App State falls in their first attempt. And then there was five, so we're winding it down towards the finale, and my goodness, the wheel loves Texas State. Really, only a couple directions they can go now, and yep, it's going to be up. That is South Alabama. I believe I can fly, and Finley, my goodness, man, these guys are working it. Over 400 passing yards today, what can he not do? A little tip at the line. Anyone else here low-key impressed by how well the Bobcats are playing? Just gonna settle for three on this one, but what difference does it make? South Alabama's down by a bunch. Any of y'all play college football fantasy football? Because this is what they call garbage time, and there's a garbage time touchdown to Pritchett. Well, not really any questions here. I think Texas State proved that they are legit, and they're now 4-0 in North American imperialism. So hold the phone now. Texas State's a real threat. Texas State from humble beginnings to now conquering the largest landmass in North America. Four teams left, and there's two of them that are yet to get called. And are you serious? Texas State can't get a break. What is going on right now? However, this time, Georgia State, a new opponent, getting their first crack. 
Georgia State methodically moving down the field. He scans, he looks, he's sacked. And as he falls to the ground in agonizing pain, he looks up at the scoreboard and sees 36 to seven, Texas State. Georgia State is a whole lot of mid, so to play by the NIL rule, uh, we had to bench a 77 overall receiver. Need I say any more? Texas State has all backups in and they're still moving. Malik Hornsby on his first drive, a cool 4 for 4, 42 passing yards. Why not? Dang, Henry Bryant the third with his fourth sack of the game on that last one, going for his fifth there, but it's all in vain. I don't think we need to watch much more. Texas State has been blowing people out. Game in, game out here. Calvin Hill, the running back with a solid performance. I am suddenly drinking the Kool-Aid and now I'm a Texas State believer. Two tough opponents remain, and they're both pretty solid. It's going to be Troy. Troy is going to have to head to the right. And with that outcome, Texas State has clinched a spot in that championship game because right now it's Troy, Louisiana. Here we go. Third and 10. He's going to drop back. Find a receiver coming back for it. Fourth and two. Raging Cajun's most notable opt-out was on the offensive line, and, well, he got it. Troy, on the other hand, down a defensive end. So really, in terms of, like, star key, like, playmaker positions no one really out that's not to say a left guard or a left end can't be a star that's not what i'm saying it's just that receivers like that you know no one's out of the game raging cajuns with the big touchdown here and it's all of a sudden a close game seriously a lot riding on this let's see who's motivated enough to get to the championship game raging cajuns struggled throughout the entirety of this game but so far they're hitting the right buttons and wow under pressure still at least dumped it out who is going to take on big, bad Texas State for North America? Will it be the Cajuns squeaking one out here last minute against Troy, or will the Trojans hold strong? Second and two, 10 yards out from pay dirt, and there we go. That'll get him closer. First in goal, he's going to drop back, scan the field, go across, and hit no one. If Troy coughs it up here on this drive, they're going to have to come down and at least get the field goal, and yep, they coughed it up. Impressive work here from Louisiana. Troy has a chance to respond, and he is tackled from behind. Not sure why they're choosing to... Why are they killing clock when they have all three timeouts right now? Yo, confusion, confusion, confusion. Hello. Um, well, Troy fans, I guess your team wanted to wait to the very last second and step up to make a play. Now you're just out of time and out of luck, so... Congratulations to the Raging Cajuns. Coach of Troy, you got to get fired. Louisiana moves on to the championship game. This is big for them. These guys just sprung on the scene with their first game, and now look at them. One win away from conquest completion here, and Texas State is going to be the home team in the championship. Texas State in their magical run is in jeopardy right now. They have to hold. Louisiana's found themselves in a good position here, up by six. Any points gets it to possession. Clearly a touchdown is preferred, but a field goal will do just as nice. And oh my goodness, as I say they're in a good position, here comes the big bad Bobcats with the hit stick fumble and return 40 something yards. The moment anyone started doubting, Texas State says believe, have faith. Raging Cajuns have been giving them a fit on defense here, but dual threat finally gets the first. If Texas State can manage to come back and pull this game out as well, it's going to look really, really good. And that is a rough loss. And what I mean is it's going to look really good is that these guys have beaten like seven opponents. And that means they'll be able to steal like seven players from the Sun Belt. Bobcats have been crazy all season long here in North America. It's still very much anyone's game. And Louisiana decides to go for it here on fourth and six. On the rollout, it didn't work. Unbelievable. Giving the Bobcats here prime real estate to get back at it. And yeah, TJ is the man. You know what they say, it ain't over until it's over, but start thinking right now or doing research about some of the all-time Texas State greats or Louisiana greats and comment down below. We need to figure out campus legends and whoever's going to go on is going to be a minute. Really, for any team here, though, the NIL rule is going to come back and help them tremendously in the next round. These guys were without their best players, and now they're going to be able to steal like seven players of the best on all the teams out there. So suddenly you go from without using any of your best players to not getting all of the best in the Sun Belt. And fourth and 29, you can just about kiss your dreams goodbye here, Louisiana. And yeah, you did everything you had to do except the final inches. Wow, G to the G. Texas State won so many games, so battle-tested. They did so much 
and pull off the championship victory. I'm blown away. This was an impressive feat. These guys are only 75 overall in college football revamped. If we learned anything this imperialism, it's that Texas State is ready for war. These guys are headed for all-out world war when everyone comes together, the victors of each continent square off and go toe for toe. Spoiler alert for anyone that hasn't seen any of the other imperialism maps, go check out those videos because I'm about to reveal the global map and get a look at the landscape. And here we go, Texas State representing for North America. So strap in and get ready for a lot of fun around the corner. If you're soaking it up like I am, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and drop a like. I'll catch you all in the next. And in the meantime, you can feel free to check out any of these other videos on your screen right now. They're bangers.